and welcome to this 4th of July patriotic episode of Rushed Vibes. Now please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and alleged justice for all. Hey, friends, family, and everyone in between, we are back in the flesh to rush our vibe with you. I just want to go on record and say that I had absolutely (laughs) no idea that the Pledge of Allegiance was going to be recited at the beginning of this episode, nor did I sign off on it. Because had I known, (laughs) I would not have signed off on it. Look, I'm just trying to give y'all patriotism. That's uh, one, I wanted to, I got into it and I wanted to see if I actually remembered. If you guys knew, did you guys do that in school where they'd like pick different students to to do the pledge in the morning on the, what? I don't think so. Maybe. Okay. Maybe it's a Southern, that's not, that's a Northern thing, but like you were picked I can't remember if it's the principal or like the teacher, but like there, I had many a weeks where I had to get to school early so that I could be in the office so that I could get on the loudspeaker for the entire school. And I would lead the the pledge of allegiance. This was like elementary school. I can't, I don't think I did it in middle and high school, but I definitely did it in elementary school. And I was amazing at the pledge of allegiance. I was always on time, but then they always had like the alternate in case you were late to fill in. You should really be proud of yourself. I am. And look at me. 20 some odd years later, I can still recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't even know if our kids, if our kid knows the Pledge of Allegiance. I, don't, I guess they don't teach you want You want to teach it to her? No. Okay. Because I, as you heard, yeah. I, I added some things that weren't, yeah. that weren't in there, but happy 4th of July. Yeah, Allegedly, whatever. whatever. <laughs> that, I mean, that's how I feel about it. Um, and speaking of, it, it is the actual literal Fourth of July we're recording this, so uh, you may hear some fireworks come through the audio as as our neighbors are having all of the fun, uh, potentially waking up our kids, and according to those uh, neighbors on next door, frightening their pets. So please be considerate if you're firing off fireworks of all the animals who may be affected they'll be okay it's by the commotion it's one night i like i always wonder about like animals that live in uptown because the baseball stadium they put on fireworks stadium, every friday fire trucks fire ambulance noise. so maybe we just need more holidays for fireworks so that animals can adapt and get used to conditioned to the noise of fireworks sure possibly Anyway. So we ate well today. We ate very well, yep. as we normally do. I mean, we eat well every night, but holidays are truly special occasions because Jessica pulls out her best stuff, and today was no exception. So she made some ribs, some chicken, some corn on the cob. I what made, else did you make? I made my German potato salad. German potato salad. was a little wet. It's supposed to be. I know, but I, just, I don't really do wet food. So it was good. It was straight. But I didn't expect, I didn't expect the potato salad to be wet. I just, it's just, I mean, it's just not, my, it's not my thing. Well, that explains why I don't, I don't know too many Germans. But I've made German potato salad before. That don't mean it wasn't wet then. And it doesn't mean I, I didn't feel some kind of way about it then. You've never voiced it. I'll just make your regular old southern yes. black potato salad. Please do. It's the paprika on top. A wet potato salad. Anyways, um... And pasta salad. And pasta salad. This pasta and salad was grid, good. And a grilled vegetable medley with yeah. brats. It was all good. If you uh, follow Jessica on Instagram, I believe she put it on her story. So if not, uh, at Jess Russian on Instagram, go check it out. But it then, didn't turn out as good as Oh, I actually, by the, time, by the time you all are watching this, the story will be gone. So. Sorry. I got the picture on my phone so I can send it to you directly. Maybe you should just post it to your... My page. I didn't page. get a great picture. My... Um, my plating was rushed, so it's not as good. So if it's not a great picture, I usually put it on the story. And if it's a great picture, I put it on, on the feed. So we ate really well. We did. 
It was fantastic. I tried a new smoking technique. So the ribs, the ribs were on the grill for five, four or five hours. Four or five hours, yeah. Yeah, but I still, I can, I can grill, but I don't, re- I don't refer to myself as a grill master. Um, so I probably just, I need to up my grilling technique. I also don't think we have a great grill for grilling. It's a very inconsistent grill, but, um. It's because we don't use it. (laughs) That too. Uh, but I would use it more if it was more consistent. But anyway, 4th of July, parents came up, um, with the nephew, the youngest nephew. So, you know, it was just a small intimate team. Um, but we had fun. Dessert was my favorite part. Made a red, white, and blue berry dessert see what i did there um kids enjoyed it that they asked for seconds never had dessert request seconds but um yeah that almost never happens i'm doing my uh my patriotism i got my dollar store american fourth of july scarf on really because i i didn't want to do my hair um i twisted it up and i was like y'all gonna get face so i gave you full face makeup but um, I did I did nothing special with my with my hair at all, um, but that's okay. It is what it is. It is what it is. Anyway. Um, and speaking of per- uh, apparel, I'm rocking the uh, support yourself tee from uh, kind folks at support your folk. support your support your folk local clothing uh, brand line here in Charlotte. Yes, real local um, to us. Extremely local. Like, like next, stone's throw. Right, stone's throw next door local. Uh, like drop yeah. our kids off at the front door and holla at you later local. Nah, nah, nah um, we're not there yet. We're not there but yet. But yeah, they uh, they sent a couple shirts over. I'm rocking mine. Jessica will probably wear hers at some point. Yeah. Um, we'll draw, like always, anytime we push somebody's brand, uh, we will drop the link below in our YouTube description. So if you like it, this is a picture of a basketball player pulling his younger self up so uh support yourself and, and undisclosed your to the folks that support your folk a portion of all proceeds no. <laughs> here we go <laughs> of, of, no of, of apparel soul no. will make its way back over here to uh rushed vibe studios it, it won't and the advancement of contributing to your entertainment needs it won't they don't know this but it's it's coming it won't it, it's coming so it's um it's been a week. It's been a long week and uh, there's been a lot of stuff going it's on. It's always been a long week. I know. I know. I mean, it was a long weekend too with the holiday weekend. And there's been a lot of stuff going on. Uh we obviously can't get to all of it. Um you'll have to rely on your social media feeds. But I think we've got we've got a pretty decent pretty decent lineup tonight. So uh we're going to take our first break and then when we come back we're going to get right into it. All right, we're back. Why are you looking at me? Because like you didn't me? press start. Oh, that start. I'm sorry. We are starting on the on here in, in the camera. Yeah, Yo, you can't. Just, that just means you can't ramble on this. You can't this get segment. good help these days. <laughs> you really can't. People Man, start getting look, comfortable. Look, so <laughs> so look. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday. I'm gonna tell a story before we get into our show. That's so story. yesterday, I went out and cut the grass, our lawn. For the first time in like a month, I just been putting it off. But I was like, all right, I'm getting ready to go out of town for work for a few weeks. So it's going to get ridiculously high. The HOA is going to come knocking on the door. I don't want to deal with that drama. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to cut it. So I went out yesterday morning, like probably about 9, 45, 10 o'clock in the morning, and started cutting the grass. It was cool. It wasn't as humid. It was sunny, but, you know, it was it was doable. The weather was, was, was bearable. So uh, we've got a decent, yeah, a decent lot. Not quite an acre, but... Yeah. It's 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 pushing pushing an acre, uh, and we have this really uh, we have a hill in the backyard that's it's some land. straight straight incline. So it took me about three three and a half hours to cut it. I come in, and I noticed like three quarters of the way through, I just like stopped sweating <laughs> completely, which I thought maybe it was just because it was cool. So I come in, I take a shower. I'm, I'm exhausted, but I'm you know I'm drinking water, trying to replenish, and I just get this headache like on the side of my head, and it is pounding. Boom, 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 boom. And it got to the point, like six o'clock at night, I just told I just went upstairs. I thought I was gonna be sick because like I couldn't I could barely open my eye and my body was just going through some things. I just went to bed. I laid down. I went to bed from like seven at night till about 
eight thirty this morning when we woke up. But I've been a little I've been a little disoriented all day. So um that's why I forgot to start. We have a little setup here. I forgot to start the timer. Jessica wanted to give me a hard time because she has no decency. David, what did you have for breakfast yesterday? Before you went and mowed the lawn outside in the heat. Water. Frozen water in the form of ice cubes. I rest my case. David be doing some things. And if I didn't know his mom the way I know his mom, I'd be questioning his mom. I'd be like, so I got him at 23 and change. I was 22. No. Uh, 23? Yeah. If you were 22, this would not have worked. Um, what the, wait, what? A year, a year makes wow. a world of difference. Wow. Um, yeah, wow. I'm mean like, uh, Ma, what were you doing? <laughs> what were you doing for 23 years? Because this could be doing some questionable stuff. But, um, yeah, he, he about died. Like, I went out with Savi to go pick up groceries and came back, didn't even know that he was down on the couch he didn't move didn't like didn't flinch i put groceries away i argued with savi uh i went back and forth with solace he was like mommy what's for dinner is it ready and i was like chick i just walked in the house with bags full of groceries i don't have dinner ready for you um and he didn't move i just i happened to look over and see a foot with a batman sock on it and that's how I realized he was. I love those Batman. Was I love here. those Batman socks. Um, very, very and then he just got up and went upstairs. I just didn't have it. So I was like, okay, I guess it's me and these girls. I thought I was gonna come back down. I no. thought. I thought. I the thought, way he I, strolled upstairs didn't even say bye to nobody. I felt sick, so I thought I was gonna throw <laughs> up. So I figured I better for me to to occupy the upstairs bathroom rather than the one down here. I have a pregnant wife, you know, so she tries to only go up and down the stairs like once a day, which is understandable. So I want to, you know. Two times max. Be in the bathroom down here in case she had to use it. And I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't end up getting sick, but I didn't throw up, but I, I felt I was nauseated. So I just laid in the bed until I, it, I thought it was going to happen ine- inevitably. Didn't happen. I just passed out. Yeah. That's, so. what, that's what he did. That's all he wrote. Um, but I, I managed the girls. I had to work. Um, I don't know that I've ever said it, but I work on Pacific time. So. I had to work six These fireworks to, are going crazy out here. Six to seven and then seven to eight, which is really nine to ten and then ten to eleven. And I by the time I got the groceries put away, fed the girls, it was eight forty. And I was like, I don't have enough time to put one of them, mean meaning the small one, to bed in time for me to get get to work. So we ended up having a work slash mommy daughters movie night. We watched Frozen. Um, Savi enjoyed Frozen. Um, she was over here like, did you see that? Clapping away. So um, I was able to pull it through. And I was like, all right, I got this. I can handle this. I see? I, I handled this. Superwoman. Man, you about had me say something. You're <laughs> so, a woman. I hear you roaring. I don't need to be roaring. You already know I can roar. Let's see you flex on one You've time. You've watched me give birth twice. Let's see you flex on him one time. Uh, look at it. There you go. All right, you need to be doing all that. Sorry. That's enough. Um, but yeah, so we survived. We made it. Um, he's still alive. I think he's... Might. He's, he's, yeah, he's handling himself. For the most part. But mm. let that be a lesson to you. Yes, eat, always eat breakfast. Eat for breakfast. the most important, important meal of the day, obviously. I'm not... Even if it's just a banana, every, I guess every, every, every once in a while, I have to remind myself that I'm not 23 anymore. And I can't just get up. I'm 30, 33. 10 years. This is my. Decade. This is my. This is the end of my coming to the end of my Jesus year. Mm-hmm. It'll be thirty four in November. So about to get crucified. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, so there was a there was a, a, a headline mm. going along. I don't know why I'm caressing the table. I don't know. There was a headline going on, I mean, on social, wood table. social media last week, um, where there was a uh, a young woman by the name of Shikari. Uh, Richardson, right? Who uh, like just made shockwaves. I had never heard of her before, Neither. but made shockwaves on Twitter um, as she qualified for the uh, Olympics in the hundred meter dash. And they, they, her hair was was orange, and she had the long, the like long nails, Phoenix. and like the great physique. And they, they caught her running in slow mo, and she was pointing as she was running across the across the finish line, and she was killing it. Now, this didn't happen last week. This happened a couple of weeks ago. But last week, it, uh, it came out that she actually failed uh, a drug test mm. for uh, having traces of THC 
uh, in her system and tr- traces of THC were in her system because she smoked marijuana. Um, because I got high. <laughs> <laughs> so because of because of this and because that that showed up, I believe her um, her qualifying uh, results were disqualified. Thus, she is disqualified from competing in the hundred meter dash. Race. I'm not sure what what the official term is. I believe it's 100 meter dash um, in the Olympics, but I believe she can still compete in the four by one. Um, so, because she's she's only suspended for a month, so I guess the four okay. by one comes after the. That's why I was confused because yeah. I was seeing stories that she could, and then I was seeing stories that she couldn't. I, I believe lately the the latest is that she can okay compete in the four so by one. She was one. competing in two, but she can only Correct. compete in one now because the 30 day suspension. Got Correct. It. All right. Thank Correct. you for clarifying. Sure, that's what we do here on Rush Vibes. We clarify, right. even for each other. Talk. Sure. So, uh, obviously, you know, everybody got to talking, uh, and everybody started throwing their opinion out there. Some people were like, boycott the, <laughs> boycott the Olympics. If Shikari can't go, nobody should go. And people were like, pump the brakes. <laughs> like, Pull like the emergency. I'm down for the culture, but if I got a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to go to the Olympics, my black ass is going to the Olympics. <laughs> so... <laughs> and then other people were like, you know, uh, like the Olympics should let, like the, the Olympics committee should let her slide. Like weed isn't even, or marijuana isn't even performance enhancing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, like it's legal in, in like however many states here in, in the United States. And then the other people were like, yo, you knew that this is, an, this is a banned substance um, by the Olympics committee. Why would you put yourself in that situation? So it was it was a smattering of, of of opinions, obviously, as with with most things. So I wanted to just toss it around because I know you saw it. So I'm curious what your opinion is on the uh, weed gate. Weed gate, <laughs> <laughs> sophisticated, call it marijuana gate. Um, reefer, I reefer was gate. I was torn. Uh, I I have my a lot of qualms with the. Um, the Olympics. I don't know if it's the Olympic Committee I'm upset with or if it's Tokyo I'm upset with. Um, but I. These fireworks sound like gunshots over here. Yeah, we're, we're, we're okay. We're fine. Um, initially, I was coming at like, y'all dang. from East, East Charlotte. <laughs> I was kind of like, dang, why are you. Why why you consume marijuana? Because one, you're training, and if I'm not mistaken, when one so, gets high, they eat so a, a little, lot, a, and I feel like that's a good thing. A little bit of context high. I did forget to provide is that um, apparently during an interview, she found out from uh, the interview interviewer that her biological mom had passed. Okay, and so she said it kind of it kind of threw her for a loop. She was like, "Well, like." Why and why is the first I'm hearing this from a complete stranger interviewing me? So she said she turned uh, to the marijuana to kind of help her relax, and thus okay. That's how it so it's a coping mechanism. Um, so I forgot reg- to provide that. I'm regardless, sorry. I, I after taking thought, which is why it's important to you know kind of take a moment to develop your opinions. Because um, initially I was like, "Girl, you working out? You smoking weed? Like, ain't that gonna slow you down?" Um, you know how many professional by like basketball players <laughs> i mean in high school like most of the athletes i knew were like no. high in the bathroom so i'm not surprised and right. a lot of them still got scholarships but um i guess i was kind of like oh, we know we do drug tests why why are we doing this but yeah. um additional context i do remember um michael phelps smoked he smokes but he wasn't caught it wasn't caught it, in his it system. In a, they, in a they, caught, they caught he got the a picture. picture. Yeah. Um, and then what's his name? Ryan, the other swimmer who like pulled a. What do you remember that actor? Uh, no, I don't. He, I guess they went to Brazil and he like faked his kidnapping, like or almost kidnapping or robbery. Ryan, Ryan Lochte, maybe. Um, yeah, they had the Olympics in Brazil when they did it in Rio, and he like faked something. And and like people were like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and it turned out like it wasn't it wasn't real. So he did that, and and that was I think during the Olympics. Um, and then you've got, if I'm not mistaken, Usain Bolt. He's Jamaican, not stereotyping Jamaican, but I mean he he he's made it obvious that you know he gets down with the marijuana. So initially I was like, there. I mean she's not like she's snorting lines. It's not like she's you know taking hits. What? Why why do we have to, <laughs> what? 
It's not like she's snorting lines or taking. I know. I heard you the first time. That okay, was rhetorical. You have to actually why you're need to repeat yourself. Or she's like, you know, the thing with the spoon where you melt. Like she's not doing all of that. Like it's some, it's it's an herb. Um, I mean, CBD is becoming really big. Lots of states are regulating it. Uh, so I was kind of like, is it is it really that big a deal? I get where people were kind of like, dang girl, like you got your opportunity. Why are you gonna mess it up? Young people nowadays. Um, I was for a moment like was that yo, your was that your black uncle impersonation? That was. Oh, okay. Was. Um, cool. you know, the uncle who's not that old, but he's kind of old. Mm. Um, and then I was like, yo. What if all the black people pulled out of the Olympics? I did have a brief moment. I was like, yo, let's all say no. Nah. But then I was like, look, y'all work too hard. And who knows what your body's like going to be said, doing in four years. Once in a lifetime opportunity, my black ass And there's no, there's no guarantee that in four years you can do it again. So I was like, nope, get yours. Get yours now. You deserve it. But I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think that even the terminology of let it slide, um, it shouldn't, it's, it's not, it's a drug that's legal in some countries, in some states. So it shouldn't be, it's not, it's not a hard narcotic. Doesn't matter. There are literally stores that are like the Apple store that if you walk into them. If y'all have not been to a dispensary. It is like a fascinating experience. Go to LA. Dave and I went went into one. It was like, so inconspicuous it was just, it was just like a random like rundown building in downtown and, la and, it looked, and then you it, walk it in because downtown la is sketch it's legit like an apple store you got the little person with a little tablet that meets you at the door and like oh okay what are you your first here time before? here we've never had what have you had like they ask you and it's like such an they intimate. take you on a little guided tour it was it was amazing and they walk like they walk you through it it's a, it, it's it's i would go back there I would go back there just for the the customer service experience that we got. Now, mind you, we just walked through. We yeah, didn't, we just we wanted to see it because we, we were in we California. We so we anything. were like, went in Cali. We didn't buy anything. We just walked. We just strolled through and then we left. That's it. With That's a bag. That's all we did. With a bag. And a magazine. With, with you know, informational. Information. Yeah, information. A packet. You yeah. know, like them MLL packets where they're like, here you go. Come back. Yeah. If you decide to come back, this is what you should get. Sure. That's what happened. That's mm-hmm. it. That's all we wrote. Um, so I don't think it's that big a deal. And it's not a steroid. It's not anything that's actually, it's it's literally the reverse. Um, but then you've, the reverse of like an upper that would give make you be able to run 100 meters in 10 seconds or less than 10 seconds, is that? Um, so I, I, to me, it's not a big deal. But I guess I, guess I also understand the rules. Um Okay, and, I was hoping we'd get to this part. Uh, and if the rules are, if marijuana is unfortunately one of the drugs in the rules, I, I'm i upset because I feel like the Olympic Committee is coming for black women in a way that they don't come for other races. Um, like how they've banned the swim caps um, because it makes black women aerodynamic. No, it just it just means that we could take the swim cap off and have our hair not be soaking wet. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to put our hair in some cornrows and we still going to swim the seven seas and win some medals. But it just seemed like a bigger thing. I, you know what? I'll take the 30 day suspension. I hate that she has to miss a race. Cause I feel like she's going to kill it and she's probably going to get gold. Um, and maybe this is one of the, those, you know, we're going to change we're going to pivot the rules like where we would have made an exception for somebody else we're not going to make an exception for her maybe it is because she's black um because she's a threat and she can win um because You're calling this an olympic conspiracy heck yeah no oh, okay it, it's it's a it's a conspiracy against women, and then it's also a conspiracy against black women because they're they also I think they just they got a lot of backlash and just changed it. But initially they were saying that there was like one breastfeeding mom who I can't remember what sport or what um, sport she's an athlete for, but they said that she couldn't bring her baby. And someone else who would keep her baby so she could nurse her baby. Because it's not like the Olympics is a long weekend. Like this thing is two weeks. And if you keep winning, you stay longer. So it's not easy to overnight breast milk from Tokyo to Chicago or, you know, Bozema, Montana, wherever she's from. Um, So they they were like, no. So she was going to literally not compete. And they just changed the rule. So, so but she happens bring, to be. No, you, if you're a breastfeeding mom, you can bring your baby. You can. 
Okay. She happens to be white. I'm not saying that if she was black, the rules would have not been changed. Um, but I'm just saying, unfortunately, in this particular situation, you know, there is she's white. So maybe that's why they were like, OK, we'll we'll let this pass. Um, I also know Tokyo is having issues with hosting the Olympics. They can't decide if they want to or if they don't want to. Like the Olympic Committee is trumping the actual government. Um, but they I guess their covid numbers are still. So we need questionable. I, I want to ring right Bring this back in to Sorry. Shikari. Because you're, you're just going on this whole well, I mean, Olympic, I was, Olympics are trash. I was trying trash. to stage how they're, you know, they're coming trash. for women. They're coming for black women. They're coming um, for Shikari. So, okay, are you, you still going? But as a, as a person who understands the rule, True. I respect that, okay, they at least gave her the suspension. So she's still going to get the opportunity to race. Hopefully. Um, hopefully. But I just, I think it's not... It's not a hard narcotic. It's not a it's not a drug that, in my opinion, just as a recreational American, um, I don't know where that statement came from, but I don't think that it's like yeah, oh this Amer- is American recreation. I think some. Uh, I don't <laughs> think that's detrimental. Some other cultures to, would would take offense to that statement. Um, to her detri- to stop to her athleticism, which should keep her from being able to compete okay. in everything. So, um, some more context. I forgot to provide. Um, but you were supposed to read up on this, and you knew he was going to be talking about it. So uh, I don't read. In the, uh, I think she did. A, she did a, a interview um, the morning after the news broke, and she said, "Like this is where she she discussed that she had found out that uh, her biological mom had passed." And mm-hmm. so she said, "You know, I I knew what I did." Our condolences. Yes, absolutely. Uh, she said, "I know what I did. I know what the rules were, but I still did it anyway. Like I accept full responsibility." So she's not actually trying to like, um, as other people are doing. You know, trying to say, oh, the Olympics got something that, you know, they're mm-hmm. they're railing against black women. She didn't do any of that. She just accepted full responsibility, which I think is great. Uh, it's unfortunate, you know, and I'm sure she would have loved uh, for nothing else, nothing more than for, you know, the Olympic Committee to kind of look the other way on it, consider the circumstances. But unfortunately, uh, I think they I think they, they were pretty lenient. Yeah. Honestly, considering that she knowingly uh, uh, took a substance that that is that is uh, banned. Don't they have things to flush your system, though? <clears throat> I don't. I don't know. Well, like <laughs> Probably. I, I don't know. I. Like I've juice. never. I've never had to. So I, I think that that they were relatively lenient, and um, I think it, it looks good on her for just accepting responsibility and you know saying you know it's a, it's a lesson I've learned and you know I'll you know move on from it. So, um, how I feel about it is it's definitely uh, it took the kind of took the wind out of my sails because I, I loved how she kind of just. At least from my perspective, stormed onto the scene. Mm-hmm. You know, she was balling. She was, you know, she was herself. Anytime you saw a picture of her, she was just with the hair and the nails and everything. Like she was just like, "This is me. You love me or hate me, but this is this is who I am." And I just love people being um, fully embracing like who they are. Uh, and, and you know, in this world with social media, it's real. People are real quick to form an opinion on you um, and just. I love people who are just unapologetically themselves. So I would have loved nothing more than to see her get out there and, and dominate um, in that in that uh, competition. <clears throat> um, so I kind of I kind of hated it for her and and also just you know the experience of getting to watch a tremendous athlete perform and you know on the highest stage, but or the biggest stage. But I, you know, I kind of noticed some other commentary around her um, and people um, just like bashing her because of her nails and because of her hair and saying like she was fake and all that. And unfortunately it's coming from a lot of people um, within the community. And I think that's unfortunate uh, that we would, you know, especially someone who, who seems seemingly uh, is, is full of nothing but, but grace and is, and is having a moment and is kind of writing their, their story um, that we would, we would try to attack somebody who's in rather than, than trying to build them up, support, you know, support your folk. Right. So uh, I think all that all that commentary there is kind of nonsense and people should kind of you know, look at themselves if, if that's something that they're doing. But also, I noticed people are just really, really quick to just pounce when you mm-hmm. make a bad decision. And, and and some of that is just the the um, the benefit of being removed from it. Right. Like if I'm reading something on social media on my timeline and I have no connection to the person whatsoever, I'm just reading. It, it's real easy for me to project judgment on that person. Uh, because I have no relation to them. I have no uh, context, 
right? I, I have no idea what their day to day is like or whatever. So it's just really easy for people to just <laughs> just hail uh, judgments and, and criticism. Um, and I think, you know, as easy as it is to say, like, hey, you knew the rules and like you shouldn't have done it. Like, why would you mess up like a lifetime, a once in a lifetime opportunity or potentially once in a lifetime opportunity? Same time, you don't know. You don't know what it's maybe you don't know what it's like to find out that you just lost a biological mother and not hear it from anyone who's related to you. Like nobody. I don't know anyone can ever really truly say how they would react when they find out a parent of theirs dies, like whether you're connected to them or not. Like that just don't know if you haven't been through it. Um, And people are just really quick to just judge, just judge. And I I think I think, yeah, like people got to learn how to provide some grace, like just, you know. Um, just, just give some grace and acknowledge that we're all human. Um, and I think when, especially when the person is, is, is mature and big enough to realize and say, Hey, yeah, I made a mistake. I'm not going to make excuses for it. I'm going to tell you why I did it, but I'm not saying that, you know, you should pity me or whatever. You know, I think that that should give us some insight into the character of, of that person, you know, the, the one that we're, we're talking about and throwing judgments about. So. I think it, it, overall it's just unfortunate, but if if what I've learned of her within the short amount of time is is to be true, you know she'll bounce back, and if she does get to compete at the four, you know the four by one, you know she'll probably do her thing there. Um, and I look forward to her having a you know brilliant career uh, from this point going forward. But you know, I just think we need to just support support ourselves a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, and but by no means should we be asking other black athletes to boycott the olympics like let them they've worked very hard let them have their shine uh and, and let them go go do their thing so it would be nice though yeah. no it, it no it would be it, it would be no it wouldn't oh let's let simone step away y'all ain't get no medals and y'all know it but that's the thing you appreciate us no. for clout you know, it would be different if the Olympics said, "No, nah, you got orange hair, you can't come." <laughs> like that would be different. Like, okay, look, maybe we should, maybe we should rioting. look, maybe we should riot. Tokyo's coming. Down. Like, yeah, you, you, you got, long, you got long nails, you can't come out here. Like that would be different. But she knowingly took a ban, and, and you know, I appreciate took her of a, for of owning a, that of a banned substance. Yeah, I, I do she too. She definitely could have jumped on the. Like in this day and age, it's so easy to yell, you know, to to play the victim card and and yell. Which, whichever whichever ism you want you want to throw out there, um, but wow! Y'all hear these shots? Being I don't know fired? if y'all can. Hear, I can't wait to li- play this audio back because there are just so many fireworks going off. I gotta keep off. checking the monitor, and it feels I'm like so paranoid. It feels like they're going off like right over the house it's, because they're in the back of the house, which is where incredible. Savi's room is. So, um, yeah, that's. I think that that's that's our take on the car bridge and joint. So right? upset with like the Olympic it's, committee. It's it's unfortunate. Maybe this is something that. You know, the Olympics looks at going forward and like, okay, maybe we'll, you know, maybe we'll take marijuana off off the list. But like only, you know, as, as much as it's being, as much as you, the, the, like if you, if you read headlines and whatnot, as much as people would have you believe that uh, recreational marijuana is being more streamlined, it's only like 19 states that have legalized it. Uh, like here in the United States, we still have a long way to go before it's, you know, nationally uh, you know, is before it's a national recreational drug. So, um, and if you look outside, like there aren't a lot of countries um, no. that have legalized it either. So it's, I mean, it's still, we still got a ways to go. People think it's legal in Jamaica. Yeah. So people think like, it's like, no, you, no, <laughs> like you can't just, it's not legal. Yeah, like, you you can, will get locked up. <laughs> there are shows yeah, about it. Yeah, you can't just um, roll around and, you know, don't take it back to the resort. Like nah. they want to lock up Americans. Don't do that. Right. And don't call me. So, um, hopefully, I mean, We've seen some progress, you know, people thought when Biden came in, like we was just like, every, like the first bill he was signing the law would be <laughs> legalizing marijuana, that. but yeah, we, we still got a ways to go. So um, yeah, just, just keep that, your stimulus yeah, check. keep that in mind and just, just research the states where it's legal and then, you know, plan your vacations accordingly is all I'll say. So uh, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back. All right. Rush Vibes back in the building. So, why do you look like that? I'm just He's, waiting. Here. Jessica tries to act like she doesn't know what we're talking about, even though I don't. Even though we uh, 
we were, you know, what's funny is we're supposed to have production meetings every Wednesday after, um, you know, because our episodes air on Wednesdays. So that night we're supposed to have production meetings and I put it on our family calendar and it goes off every Wednesday. Of course we don't have them, but every Wednesday it goes off. I'm like, oh man, like we're supposed to have our production meeting. We've had like one and a half. Yeah. We had a couple. I think we fell asleep during one. Cause we, we do it like in bed. So we're like writing and then we just like pass out. He's writing. I'm just looking at So, um, you know, it's 2021. Right. Year of our Lord. Second year of our second COVID. second year of our COVID, and you know we're seeing uh, economies bounce back. Uh, many states are, are <laughs> many states are ending their their federal uh, unemployment benefits. Get your ass to work. <laughs> <laughs> Businesses are are hiring at, at ridiculous rates. Unemployment levels are dropping. Uh, so it's it would seem that though the economy is going to look different. Obviously, you know, companies have, have pivoted toward more remote work, um, if not 100 percent remote work. The company um, I've changed jobs recently, but the company I was at for the most part, um, they were they had pivoted to to working from home like 100 percent. So, you know, it, it seems like we're moving kind of back toward people, you know, being able to uh, provide for themselves, um, you know, start careers you know, move their careers up and forward. But last year was a really dark time for a lot of people. Uh, we talked about it here. I was furloughed uh, this year. Um, I thought it was, it was, there was a higher potential for it to happen last year, but I, I made it through unscathed and then <laughs> turned the calendar. And then it was like, oh, there Bye. you go, buddy. <laughs> Not so fast. The furlough was like, wait a minute, player. <laughs> Hold on, player. <laughs> Come here, player. Got it. So, um, nah, but like last summer, especially when a lot of the, there was a lot of, uh, uh, the culture was rallying a lot uh, during when George Floyd, Floyd was murdered, and Beyonce Taylor and Ahmaud Aubrey, And, you know, there were, there were demonstrations and protests uh, in cities across the world, um, definitely here in the country. Um, you saw a lot of black unity. People were like, no, we're going to shop black. We're going to, you know, support people. And every time you pop pass a black person in the street you know you get you know well, you I mean, we always did that. you're acknowledging well not not always um but unfortunately uh there were some people who uh took advantage of of that moment um and the fact that a lot of people were losing losing their jobs and relying on stimulus checks and, and were really needing uh small miracles to to make sure that they could keep their lights on um and I'm sorry. It, it is actually I'm I'm smiling. I'm laughing. But it's, when I read this article, I was I was really really upset. But there was a Texas couple. Um, one of them, the the husband was more no, more notable, I guess. DJ ASAP. I had never heard of him, but uh, this 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 came across my my Twitter timeline. Um, they were once featured on a very popular network of a very popular black billionaire. Uh, woman um and they were promising people uh a financial blessing of 800 percent in as little little as a week where the money resides where the money resides <laughs> so Mar marlon and lashonda moore uh dj asap uh operated a pyramid scheme called blessings in no time uh, the acronym b-i-n-t um Bint. Bent. I bent waiting for this bent. money. <laughs> so for for an upfront fee of 1400 or 1425, participants were told they could return receive a return of $11,200 or $11,400 respectively, eight times their contribution to a quote unquote blessing loom. Now there are some people who put $11,000 into this. There are some people who put sixty thousand dollars into this there were people who put literally all that they had or all that they had left um from you know the shambles of a global pandemic and people losing their jobs into this blessing loom um that these people were, were running which was actually a pyramid scheme mm. um and they were and the way it worked is you would basically come in you would put in 
uh, a deposit of 1400 or 1425 and then eventually you would bring two families in with you to have them do the same thing and then when it was your turn in the cycle or whatever you would get more than what you put in um so it's uh they i think a lot of people were uh, pit, there, you saw a lot of these pop up last summer. Um, we were approached by a couple of people or two different people on ERC, different people on different occasions about joining one. Um, I believe Susu is, is what it's called, uh, which is more, um, it's more intimate. Mo- most times when with the Susu, you, you know, it's like family or friends um, who have long, similar long term goals. Um, it's really uh, more of an accountability thing. Um, but it, it's not like you bring two more families and you bring two more families. It's, it's, it's intimate and it's supposed to stay that way. Um, but there are people like there, there's a, there's a New York times article reading about people who talk about getting on calls with this, this couple. And they were encouraging people to like, like sign people up and saying, Oh, y'all aren't working hard enough. Um, and this thing, I mean, it, it grew like it, 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 it grew to a lot, but then all of a sudden, Website wasn't loading when people tried to visit the website and the conference call, the weekly conference calls got canceled and all of a sudden we can't, we can't reach bent. <laughs> um, so now they're being sued and right, rightfully so. Um, and I, and I, and I hope they lose everything that they stole and I hope they lose everything that they happen to have before the, all the money that like, I, I hope that they are, but as naked at the end of this lawsuit because nothing, nothing upsets me more. Nothing like scammers obviously upset a lot of people. Like a lot of people hate the fact that people scam. Um, but the one thing I can't stand is someone using their blackness and using their, their, their stature to prey on a vulnerable person and a vulnerable community. Like, we walk around like a lot of people, it's real easy for people, you know, once they have a certain following or whatever, to get on a camera, to get on a cell phone, uh, to put a tweet out, to drop a Instagram reel or whatever and talk about, oh, all black, nothing, all, all black, everything, shop black, support your, support your people, um, whatever. And then you're really just scamming people. And it just it, it, like, and especially doing it of all, of, it's ridiculous to do it at any time, but to do it at all last summer when you know people are hurting and you know people are putting like the last of everything that they have into this and you know you have no intention of fulfilling the promises that you've that you've put out it's just foul and and I like I said I just hope that they get sued for every single thing and they're just on the street butt ass naked that's that's my hope that's my prayer uh and I really want and I, and, I, and this isn't a situation where I feel like you should blame the victims and though yes you should pro- if it sounds too good to be true more than likely it probably is but at the same time I've never been so desperate that I looked at something like this to put all my money into so like I haven't I haven't felt that kind of pressure I haven't felt that level of despair so I can't well I I can pretty confidently say that that's not something that I would jump at you know not not everybody. I, I I can't speak for for everybody else in the world. And I, I I don't know you know what they're going through, um, so I'm not going to blame the victim. I'm going to blame the people who prey on vulnerable individuals and vulnerable families. So I just think it's despicable. So like if 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 anybody is watching this and you got scammer in your in your persona, yo, just please please do better and please don't come our way with that because. I don't know. I'm sorry. Go. What, what, how do you feel about it? Sure. Yeah, I'm because I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna say something. And I, I got children. <laughs> I already said butt ass naked, so uh, I don't want to say anything worse. Um, I one. I'm definitely. I've never been a fan of anything that requires bring recruiting other people. Like, I, if you guys don't, you guys don't understand the um, the number of people who come to me trying to get me to join some network marketing MLM something and I no, it's just not my thing I know this isn't the same thing no no, I I know and I want to and I want to say it's things like these that give direct sales and network marketing the legit ones and there are mm -hmm. legit legit companies out there and people who who and companies that have legitimate products and uh, and services and whatnot they were they're the ones that 
grow that cloud over anything in the in those industries. Precisely. And there are people who do it legit and genuinely want to help people, um, companies who have genuine products and whatever. And then, but you have for every one of those, you have like two hundred like pyramid schemes and it just gives everybody a bad name. Mm -hmm. So I've never been a fan, especially of the ones that are, there's no tangible product and it's just, you bring your cash and then you bring two other people. Um, because I, it's, it's just, it's a lot of work. Like I'd rather just work nine to five than I bring two people and hope that those two people are going to bring two more people. Um, I, I definitely think it's absurd to, take advantage of people in, in a t at any time, honestly. Um, especially when you see that they're putting their, their life savings into something or the last of something that they have. Um, it was a tough year. It's, it's selfish to me. I could never um, take advantage of people in that capacity. Um, so that's something that's really, really hurtful, especially knowing that it's like black on black. Like that's just, it just, you know... I remember, I think, was it the Black Panthers or some gangsters? Like, it was something. I was watching a documentary, and they were talking about how, like, back in the day, you know, real gangster thugs, like, they didn't bother women, and they didn't bother children. Like, if they're going to rob somebody, it's going to be a grown man. <laughs> um, but they're not going to bother women. And I care. I think it might have been a show or something. Uh, and they were just talking about how, like, oh, these new, these new thugs, these new gangsters, they're just robbing everybody, stealing from the women, stealing from the kids. Um, mm, yeah, it's like that. It, it, it's, it's. It's like it's you just shouldn't do that to your own people, um, especially if you you have a platform and you're a reputable person. Um, oh, allegedly, allegedly reputable. Because um, now you DJ get <laughs> get yourself out of here ASAP. Um, I'm about to be DJ KY. <laughs> so you know, I agree with David. I hope they get him. I hope they 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 lock him up. Whatever. I hope that they have the funds somewhere that they can you know, class action, return it. But I mean, unfortunately these type of situations, once you lose your money, you're not, you're not getting it back. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's unfortunate. I can't imagine, you know, but that's the epitome of a Ponzi scheme. Like it, it took me, I remember when we, David mentioned, we were talking about this. Uh, I remember that I was watching a show uh, on PBS based in England and um, it was a period piece. And, one of the, the main characters was saying, talking about somebody named Ponzi and, you know, you invest money and, you know, he flips it around. And it was in that moment that I realized that Ponzi is a person. I thought Pon I thought it was just a Ponzi scheme. You never really realize like where this term came from. I think the show took place maybe around Spanish flu time, 1920s. I'd probably say 1915, 1920s ish. Um, but like Ponzi was a person and people like followed him. He said, oh, you, you give me this. I don't know what his product was. I don't know what, you know, he how he pitched it. But, you know, 100 years later, we're still saying Ponzi scheme. So, I mean, I guess that's his legacy. I don't know if that's the legacy you want. But, you know, it's it. And I was watching that period piece thinking once it clicked, like, oh, Ponzi is a person. You're about to invest your money into this scammer. Um how like the hope and joy of you know turning around their finances their financial situation and putting it into a person um was going to fix their lives and it's unfortunate because i think in terms there are so many people like i don't know that there have been any get rich quick schemes that have actually worked um and if they, they work, work work for the people yeah if i was gonna say scheme, if they work, work the they don't work the beyond like three deep if you're not within that first three like that first three tiers um, of this start of the scheme or whatever you want to call it nine times out of 10, like you're, you're going to be working harder than you need to be. Um, and then it turns into a corporation where it's like, you've got your bottom level employees and they're putting in the work for you guys. And you know, they're doing the big conferences and all the stuff, whatever. But it's just, I think especially for marginalized people um, or people who, you know, are not, raised with a silver spoon or don't have excessive privilege you know you see people and the way they tell their stories you know you pull yourself up by your bootstraps you, they simplify the wealth how easy it was to get wealth um they don't always mention who invested they don't always mention you know what uh what are they called 
not crowd funders, but angel angel investors. Angel investors uh, yeah. So there are all these people. Like there are so many corporations that you know somebody's dad had half a million dollars that they you know here you go as the foundation. So you know we're looking at these stories and we or we see these people on their come up and we're like you know what if they did that you know maybe this is something that can get me to their level. Um, but there's their privileges that those people might have that ordinary American citizens do not have. And it's just unfortunate that, you know, because life can be such a struggle for some, the idea of trying to get rich quick is so tempting and so tantalizing that people will put aside their better judgment and, and risk it. And again, I'm not, I'm, I'm co-signing with David. I'm not trying to victim blame, um, but because I understand, I, I can relate to someone who's like, I have to provide for people. I'm trying to, you know, build wealth for my family. If this works, because God forbid you don't invest it and then, you know, your friend goes into it and they're getting money and you're like, man, I missed out. Um, but then you go in it and you lose your life savings. So it's it's such a catch-22, like what, what risk is worth, what reward, and what and no reward is guaranteed. Like, you know, people spend their whole lives buying the lottery every day of the week and the money they're putting into buying the lottery – over a certain amount of time could probably equal the winnings that they're trying to get. So it's just, it's, it's unfortunate that we all, a majority of us desire to gain wealth and desire to gain it quickly. And, but you know, what's, what's crazy about this is that not, there are some people who weren't even trying to like, and I know you may not, you're speaking in a more general sense, mm -hmm. but it just made me think like there were people in this case that just wanted to pay off like student loans. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, I'm, I'm 50 deep in, like, in student loans. I just want to put, like, a dent in it or, you know, try to pay it off. People not trying to, you know, stunt for the gram or, you know, buy luxury bags or, or, or name brand bags or anything like that. People just trying to pay off their loans so that they can breathe a little bit. And it's just, like, it's, it's sickening, man, to be honest with you. Like, like to, to put to put messaging out there like, oh, we want to build a black community and we want to build wealth for the black community. We want to lift up the black community. And that's all great. I'm for it. As long as you legit, but you got people Don't like this, they're just, the they're just, community. they're just praying that they, that they literally praying on their own people. And it's like, I've, to me, there's just nothing more despicable. Um, it's just, it just really isn't. So I hope they lose the shirt and they draws and they socks too. Like just all of it. What you got going on? There's like an alfalfa twist. Oh yeah, like you, like you had last week. Camera. Yeah, last week you had one going on. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Where were you? Where were you no, saying? I don't remember because you cut me off. But um, <laughs> I was I was My just bad. going on a tangent. Just don't take advantage of people. It's unfortunate that. But I mean, honestly, we have a society. Look at our our tax structure, our government structure. Like it's it's meant to take advantage of people. There are people on the bottom level who are essentially supposed to work and hold up the top. Reaganomics. So, so I mean it's it's not it's surprising like it's it's in every trickle down economics it's it's in everything like why are middle class people paying more because there are so in taxes there are more so many loopholes that the wealthy can remain that's just the d designation of our our country that's how our country was built uh, look at slavery it's lit our the literal foundation of our country is for servitude to support the wealthy shout out to the 1619 project so, I mean, I, I'm not even surprised um, that people are still taking advantage of people. It's just, it's just unfortunate that this is the means that you have to do it. And like you said, to do it to your own people. That, I mean, that's just, I know everything shouldn't be about race, but it is. But it's like, I mean, this was somebody else. The first said go was a Nigerian prince. Like, I get that. Um <laughs> I just love the Nigerian Prince reference. Um, but other than that, like your own people from your own community, like your kinfolk, that's just not right. Crazy. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be robbing our folk. We should be supporting our folk. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel about it. So, um, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll follow this. Hopefully it ends uh, with justice. Conviction. Speaking of convictions. No, let me stop. Yeah, let's 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 chill out. We can't go there. Um, I know you want to, but not not tonight. So, uh, yeah, hopefully it rhymes with <laughs> justice is justice is served 
uh, in in Justice this case. Justice isn't always served. Um, but uh, definitely, if you're out there and you're someone who's been susceptible to to some of these things in the past, or some people some people at church have been in your ear about some things, folk. and and you know, I, I, and I it's a, you know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying a lot of these, some of the, a lot of these people in here were, they had church members pulling them into this thing too. So, uh, White just, Jesus, not Arabic Jesus, just, tr- just treat everything with a certain level of skepticism. Um, and if, uh, you know, like rule of thumb, if it's something that someone's like, you can't tell nobody about it. <laughs> Come on. Like, that's like, or kinda, it requires excessive meetings, kind of a dead giveaway. Um, and, and you know, the, the, I've also heard like, and and it's not typically true. Like, and I, like I understand why someone would say it, but it's not always true. But it's uh, if some if someone tells you you have to pay up front to gain access to an opportunity, generally speaking, it's probably some sort mm-hmm. of scheme. It's not always true. Um, but a lot of times it is. Like if you're investing or something. Like if you're investing in like a company, like that's that's private, um, like a startup or something. Um, you have to pay to be able to become an investor, uh, but this is this is a little different, um, I, or I think that that's a little different than um, what the saying is actually targeted toward. It means like direct sales opportunities and, and things like that. So um, yeah, but just you know, just treat everything under a certain level of skepticism is, is what I would say. And, um, and if something seems too good, something seems too good to be true. Generally it speaking, is. it it is. So that's our public service uh, message. So. This is episode 30 plus three, three, 30 plus three of Rush Vibes. Rush Vibes See, is. And look who I'm wearing. <laughs> look who I brought. Hallelujah. I brought Middle Eastern brown skin Jesus. Yes. Because he's from the Middle East. Shout out to uh, World, World Vision. I believe we, yes. we bought those shirts from doing big things on, on Instagram. They got, they have some big name but celebrities brown, rocking, brown skin Jesus. rocking, His hair rocking really shirts. Look uh, the genuine Jesus is what, what I call him. Middle Eastern Jesus. Genu- genuine Jesus. Not, the, uh, the not real Anglo Jesus. Jesus. So, but you know, that's, that's not New King James, but that's not, you know, you know, they say it's not important. It's Jesus. It's just the teachings of the Lord that look, matters. Not his eye color. Not it, his it, skin it is color. important. <laughs> Cause y'all got all ships and went around the world. <laughs> Use this blue eyed blonde haired guy Look, who just randomly showed up. So, um, so I know he's half ep- God. Episode but. episode thirty three of Rush Vibes in the books. So, uh, if you're uh, if you stumbled upon our channel this week, we would love to have you on a weekly basis. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you sub- and make sure you're getting our notifications because we push episodes every Wednesday morning. Every Wednesday, thirty three weeks straight, we're still going. Still going, going strong. Anything else? No. Okay. Jesus so, is brown. So I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna bring Jay Belkin. Um, we hope you all had a happy fourth. Uh, enjoyed the extended weekend with family and friends. If you were fortunate enough to have an extended weekend, uh, be safe. We'll see you guys next week. We love you. Appreciate you. We out. Jesus. Stop me now, yeah, I done can't wait to fucking stop me now